Hi, it's Luke at The Pages Printed, and I am back with another review. Not just another review, uh, I'm back from holiday as well, actually. I've been in France and Italy for the last two weeks, uh, and I read this book on the trip back, so I wanted to check in and tell you about it. Uh, it's published in October, so if you like the sounds of it, um, then uh, pop it in your diary or pre-order a copy from Alan and Unwin, who were kind enough to send me this edition. Uh, and the book is Mandalay Forever by the author Tatiana de Rosne. Um, and as you may have guessed from the title, it's a biography of Daphne de Moria. Uh, that's Daphne on the cover, uh, and on the rear cover as well, she's perhaps a little more recognisable. That's the de Moria I picture when I read her books. So de Moria is an author uh, who I came to, I, I guess, say relatively late in life, relatively late in my life. Uh, I read Rebecca when I was a teenager and very much enjoyed it, but for some reason I didn't read any more of de Moria's work. Uh, however, in June of this year, I was in Cornwall on holiday and we visited Foy, the town where de Moria spent most of her life. Uh, there's a very nice bookshop there which is full of de Moria's work uh, and staffed by people who are experts in the life of de Moria. So they were kind enough to recommend some more to me. Uh, and I promptly read My Cousin Rachel whilst in Foy, uh, and that's a beautiful black gothic novel with a lovely kind of open dark ending, um, which was actually made into a film this year too, starring Rachel Weiss and Sam Claflin, uh, and it's worth checking out. De Moria was an incredibly talented author who trod over a whole range of styles. Uh, she wrote, She wrote what she felt like, uh, which I think is quite remarkable. Um, thankfully her early books were quite successful, so her publishers gave her relatively free reign, and she was able to write histories, she wrote biographies, she wrote books that kind of verged on fantasy, she wrote books that almost verged on science fiction, she wrote romances, she wrote gothic novels, she, she really uh, kind of wrote a whole range, uh, and whilst the quality does vary from book to book, um, there's no denying that she's an incredibly skilled author. Uh, she's one who wasn't particularly critically acclaimed during her life, um, but she knew she wrote well, and she knew that the book sold immensely well, so I don't think that's ever anything that bothered her uh, all that much. The biography itself is very interesting. De Moria's life is a fascinating one, starting from her birth up until her death. It, it never ceases to be entertaining, and uh, as a woman, De Moria is intriguing. Um, and someone who I, I think it would be fascinating to spend some time in the company of, uh, and I'm probably going to bump her onto my list of uh, potential dead dinner party guests. Um, what makes it even more interesting is that de Rosne, uh, the author of this biography, uh, is a novelist. Uh, she's written a fair few books in French, um, and this biography she has written very much in that style, uh, so it is still it reads like a novel. If you like biographies because they're full of facts and figures and dates and footnotes, etc., then you might not be a big fan of this. I was quite surprised because personally I I read fiction very fast, um, but non-fiction books, you know, I, I, I really take it quite a leisurely pace, especially when there are facts and dates to take in. Uh, so reading this, I expected to have, you know, a relatively slow read, but we were driving back from uh, from the south of France, so I thought, well, you know, I've got a good eight hours travelling time, so I will uh, should be able to kind of, you know, if not finish it, but get through a lot of it. I think I'd finished it by lunchtime. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it really flows incredibly well. The author really puts herself into the mind of de Maria, uh, and that is from kind of a point of view from which the book is written. Um, you know, I... I'll try and find a, a segment. Um, let's have a look. The next morning, while Daphne is with Todd and the children in her stateroom, there is a knock at the door. A slender, dark-haired lady in her early fifties stands there, holding a bouquet of white roses. Behind her is a steward carrying a basket full of gifts. The woman smiles and introduces herself. Ellen Doubleday. She has come in person to welcome the famous novelist published by her husband, to make sure she arrives safe and sound. The children and Todd are charmed by their new companion. But for Daphne, 
the feeling is more intense than that. She cannot take her eyes from this gorgeous vision. She is bewitched by the elegance of her publisher's wife, her graceful movements, her hazel eyes, her velvet voice, her refinement, her distinction, etc. But you get what I'm saying. It, it really, she really stands behind Daphne du Maurier and says what she imagines her to be seeing. Which is problematic in parts. There are some scenes you read thinking, how can you be telling us that this is happening in a biography when both of the people involved are dead? It, you know, she, it, certainly some details feel a little imagined, uh, and there are bits where you may feel a bit like you're reading historical fiction. But that's not to say that the author hasn't researched uh, a hell of a lot. She travelled to Cornwall and she visited uh, Daphne du Maurier's homes, uh, although uh, not Menabilly, uh, the one she lived in for most of her life, uh, as that house is, is a private property. But she visited various homes that Daphne du Maurier lived in and also met with Daphne du Maurier's family, who, who knew and, and loved du Maurier well. Um, so that, that, you know, reads into it. And when the author allows you to hear her voice, um, she does explore those places and, and describes them to sort of a, a really fascinating level of detail. De Maria is just intriguing. She led this life that was really quite exciting, uh, going from a childhood with a father who was a very famous actor, um, growing up with her uncle Jim, who we know better as uh, J.M. Barry, the writer of Peter Pan. Uh, so she grew up knowing her Uncle Jim, and her cousins were the Cluellen Davies boys, um, the boys who J.M. Barry adopted and wrote Peter Pan for. Uh, if you've seen Finding Neverland, you'll, you'll kind of know more about that story. And if you haven't, uh, watch it. It's, it's a decent film. Um, but yeah, going from that childhood uh, to going off to sort of quite a fancy finishing school in France, where she ended up probably having an affair with her French teacher, as you do, uh, to then um, kind of growing up, moving to Cornwall and falling in love with Cornwall, uh, and then falling in love properly uh, and, and actually uh, getting married to her husband, uh, who she was with until his death in the late 60s. Uh, but in that time, she had obsessions, uh, she had affairs. Um, there are some very interesting discussions with regards to her sexuality. Uh, she had affairs with women, but she didn't like to be called a lesbian. Um, she could have been bisexual. There's also talk about whether she was possibly transgendered. Uh, she wrote quite openly about being a boy inside. So, you know, it, you can't really put the rules and feelings of today's society on people of the past, but it's certainly an interesting thing to consider, uh, and de Rosne touches on it with great sensitivity, uh, and, and it makes for interesting uh, and, and just really eye-opening reading about an author who was immensely talented um, and led a life that perhaps at first glance didn't look all that exciting. I mean, the things de Moria loved to do were uh, go fishing, wander around her little town, and in her later years kind of stay at home and, and watch the telly. Um, but behind that, she was a fascinating woman who, who really embarked on some very interesting journeys and some very interesting relationships throughout her life, uh, and they're well worth reading about. If you're a fan of Demoria, I absolutely recommend you pick this up, uh, and if you're not, it's still a very good book. It's an easy read, and because it reads like a novel, you don't ne necessarily have to be a, a huge fan of de Maria or hugely knowledgeable about her work. Instead, it's a very interesting portrayal of life in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, going through to her later years in, in the 70s and, and then eventually the 80s. Uh, so it's a really interesting portrayal of, of early to mid and even going into late uh, 20th century England. So for that reason, uh, you could well pick it up, uh, and I think hopefully reading it will make you a fan of De Maria, and you can perhaps then pick up her novels and, and give them a read too, because they are very well recommended. But yes, this is out in October, um, it's published by Alan and Unwin, uh, grab a copy, have a read, it, it's really very good, it's got a lovely kind of lovely cover, lots of lovely pictures inside, uh, and yeah, it's, it's just intriguing. Um, and I've been kind of trying to read a bit more about Demaria ever since. 
Um, so if that's any reflection, then it's worth a read. Um, but yeah, if you do give it a read, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, you can contact me on here, uh, so you can comment. Uh, you can like and you can subscribe as well, that'd be great. Uh, you can also contact me on my website, which is thepagesprinted.com. On Instagram, I'm at Luke V. Marlow, or on Twitter, I'm at Luke Victor M. That's it for now. Uh, I will see you next time, and happy reading.